All right, hello everyone. I finally got this project done, which is a Connect 4 game. So let me demonstrate it to you first. Um, this is the control panel. And these four buttons, there are five buttons here. This one is confirm button. This one left, down, up, and right. So basically the game is, there are two players in this game. Um, player will use this button to control the movement of this disc, or whatever you want to call it, and drop it this this disc on like any of those like um, grid or spot, and then it's an, an, another player's turn and drop a disc of different color on other spot. So let me get started. So let's first go up, right, and press here. And then you see there's another player here which have a blue color disc. And let's see, move it here, press it, go up, right, up, press it. And uh, let me finish this game quickly. So, um, Now we want the blue player to win the game, so we place here and place this one here. Now if I place, now you see the blue player got four in a row, but this one has not been placed there yet. So if I press place it, the game will restart and uh, pink player got first again. So. Um, this is pretty pretty simple and straightforward game, and this entire code I think only takes about at most at most three hundred lines of code, and at most. And I think it's if my estimation is right, if I remove all those unnecessary uh, curly braces, which takes one line of code. Well, I think the entire thing will probably be within like 190 lines of code. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy, straightforward. Um, what you need to figure out is uh, how this action works and how to read the read and inter interpret the action, the movement of the uh, or whatever movement of the disk and I mean to interpret the relationship between the button you pressed and the movement of the disk. And then you will need to figure out whether or not uh, a certain spot is occupied. For example, if I press a pink disk there, and then I try to move the blue disk to the right side, but it doesn't work. And then if I move, try to move the blue disk down, it will not work either because this one is marked as occupied. So you got to get that part done. And then the final thing is you will need to tell whether or not there are four disks are in a row. In a row means it's in a row either in diagonally, horizontally, or vertically. And which basically you use, it basically takes like four nested for loops and which is not that complicated compared with the one that I did while I was in my uh, undergraduate um, programming courses. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys have fun. Enjoy it, making your own ones. Uh, I think if you want to improve it, you definitely can uh, use a joystick and a button instead of four buttons, and, um, instead of five buttons so that the movement of the uh, disk is more um, simple, or I should say is more natural, more natural. And what, what you can also can do is, um, so for example, right now, it's like the disk couldn't cross it. For example, there's an um, empty spot here, but however, if I want to move this disk to the right side, I couldn't do it because, like, because that's how my code works. So one thing you can do is you can mark this one uh, temporarily as this one. And then when you press the right movement button again, it will be placed here. And that can be a little bit tricky, but I think, I think everyone should try that and just to see how that can work. And uh, 
the third improvement would be to add some liquid disc crystal display to show the game status. For example, it's yellow, uh, it's pink player's turn or blue player's turn or who wins the game or show the game status or whatever. And that can make the game a little bit more fun. And then if you do want to do more things, you can use sensors to uh, detect players like movement or you can use uh, some like um, buzzer or like vo like volume player or, whatever, or like music player to integrate that so that when the game is done or every time you place a button or every time you made mistakes there will be some noise generated which will be more fun and finally what you can do is instead of using a single Arduino board you probably can add some Wi-Fi to it or Bluetooth so that you don't have to play this game um, very closely. I mean, I mean you can use a remote control or like connect with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything you want and to make this game a little bit more flexible. Well, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, hope you guys enjoy it.